Right then, time for a quick catch up on where we are with the with this base. So, as you can see, it's jumped ahead quite a bit from probably where it was last filmed. Reason being because I was studying the wall um, and there was just something missing, shall we say. It just, it, it just didn't look right. So after a bit of sort of Googling of sort of uh, Middle East streets and things like that, they seem to have a lot of overhead cabling. And I think that's been a, a, a bit polite and an understatement because they have a lot of it. Every, all their cables seem to run above ground. So what I've added is Mini Art do a nice set of telegraph poles. So I've built a couple of them and sort of modified them to what I need to fit the scene. Not 100% the, the kind of accurate for the Middle East, but they do add a bit of height and that lot is missing. And also I've added sort of an advertising sign. Now that kind of, that um, sign comes with the kit itself or the RT, the wall and, uh, um, sorry, with the kit with the posters comes on that sheet that I showed. So all I did was quickly just scratch built a bit of plastic card. Just told the sign on really nothing. You know, nothing really um, hard about it. Um, I did a bit of weathering. It was just a bit of hairspray technique. It was just for me to practice because you're not going to see behind here anyway. You, you know, I've not done anything behind the wall. So figures again, master box out of another set that they do. Um, I think it's the. US tankers giving some of the, the children uh, Snickers. So that's just added to the scene and that's got the little dog in it as well. So I've added a dog just to, you know, try and tell a, a little bit of a story. Um, wiring was just thin, or the cable should I say, or just thin copper cable, or copper wires, different, I've got a load of different, I've got a bag full of it. So I've just wrapped that around. I think if I did that again, I would probably use something different. I was actually thinking dental floss. They've got the sag, but there's kinks in them. Where obviously, if you look at sort of overhead wires, they've not, you know, they're pretty straight and they sag a bit more realistic than that. But again, I've never tried this before, so this is all a bit sort of experimental for me. Definitely going to be using um, another one of the telegraph poles on a on a, a probably Northern Europe diorama. Um, because they come out really well so I'll do a proper tutorial on how I did that they come in a couple of halves and then it was kind of a milliput you know two part sort of filler just to get the blending and then and then just carve it and, and use a you know one of them just to add texture to it wood grain so I'm quite happy with the way they came out um, like I said, it, it was it was definitely lacking height. So, a couple of bits of rubbish. I wanted like a plastic bag and an empty cigarette packet and just some litter as well. Which just, again, just adds something a bit to the scene. So, the last part, really, for me, is um, pigment. I'm just going to add a bit of pigment to the, to the base. I just want that dusty feel. We've got not a bad sort of groundwork to be honest I'm I'm quite happy with actually the way this has turned out with just airbrushing and paint but I think if we just add a bit of pigment that will just give that proper dusty appearance and, and kind of just finish this off so again pigment I've learned is less is more so I've got two of these are life color pigments um, I have got another one but I don't know where it is I've got a feeling it might be actually in the unit at work. So I've got Lebanon dust and, and, and Sinai sand. So there they are. Again, I'm gonna use this sparingly. I don't wanna actually lather the base in this stuff. Cause again, it's this has got more of a gray sandy color where this is quite yellow. I think it will just add some nice little touches. So. I've also got a bit of pigment fix as well. I've had this for a long time. Again, you could use X20A or White Spirit, something like that. Again, I normally put my pigments on last because then that kind of 
you're not going to touch it again. You know, once they're on, that that's it. The only other thing, actually, before I remember as well, is I've just boarded it out. This is just a bit of balsa wood, just stuck on with white glue, and and then trimmed down to shape. Just a little tip that I should really have known um, is actually make this board in before you actually get into the rest of the painting and stuff. It makes your life a lot easier because then if there's any gaps you can fill them in and just blend it better and you're not afraid of chipping. I've done quite a few touch-ups because obviously I've had, to, I've had a sharp blade just to trim it down and then you're catching edges and things like that. It's, it's one of them for uh, another thing just to note to remember next time I do something. So pigments again, I'm going to keep them dry. Um, and if you're just wondering why there's a blue background, because if I take it away, everything's kind of just blends in with the paint rack behind it. So I've got a nice thing for a uh, white sheet of paper that I'm going to pin up for when we take some final reveal photos. But uh, for now, this will just do so you can actually try and see what I'm doing. Okay. So soft brush, cheap soft brush, nothing. Don't use your best Kalinsky sables. And I'm just going to dip it in. Let's get that on camera. Just dip it into the pigment. And then just gently just run it on where you want it. You know, like kids' shoes or... Just add that dusty feel. Try and keep it out of where the tracks are, where the, you know, where the recesses are, because that would just then gives a bit of contrast for the dirt and the colour. And you can blend this in if it's too much, like probably there is. Don't forget to cover your rubbish as well, because that's been on the ground for a while, that's going to get covered as well. Okay, so then that just adds another bit of a another level to to what you've already done. <sighs> this is messy, by the way, so just be aware of it when you're dealing with pigments. They're uh, they're not the cleanest. Then take another rush if you're not to and just blend away with a clean brush, a bit like what you do with oils. Just work it till you till you're happy with your results. go
definitely looks like a uh, dusty, dusty sort of Middle Eastern street. So I'll just carry on doing the wall at the back and a bit of the thing, and then we will get some final shots and do the conclusion of the project and get some nice fancy uh, end shots of it. So, all good. Okay, with the pigments on, it's finally finished. So, fun project, really fun project. Good, um, good breakdown of sort of like dif different disciplines, I suppose, in the hobby. Doing these um, vignettes, little dioramas, whatever you, whatever you call them. Enjoy the Land Rover, brilliant kit from Hobby Boss. Never, like I've said before, had a problem with Hobby Boss kits. They're very well engineered, go together well not overly complicated on parts either which is always nice so you can you can rattle through them at a, at a decent speed figures again master box figures i can't fault them to be honest there's some soft details like i say there's a bit of clean up but usual things with styrene figures but actually i like the poses they're very dynamic i think that they're very fluid as well where some sort of the styrene figures can look a bit wooden a bit stiff but um no Definitely not with, with Masterbox. Can highly recommend them and mini art figures. They always do some nice sets. And again, if you if you're on a budget and you can't you know stretch to resin, then there are a couple of the better manufacturers to go for. Should we say for for the uh, for figures to add to it? Again, the the RT Diorama base, first one I've ever tackled, no problem at all. Definitely going to do more the catalog. There's some really amazing stuff that that's got me imagination sort of going on what, what we can do for, for different bases and things and and, it, and again the phone just going off just a nice little scene I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm very pleased with how it's come out in the end how, it, how it's uh, how the composition is and um, placement things like that which is you know for me I don't do a lot of forward planning so it's all a bit on the fly how I put things together and sometimes you, you, you kind of, it works and sometimes it doesn't. This one, yeah, I think I've actually made some right decisions. Again, I think in future, if I'm going to do one of these, I will plan it out a little bit more because I have, I have said in the video or the video series is some things up, like order-wise should have been done before. Um, what I didn't mention is obviously when I fitted these, because these were an afterthought, it's then attaching them and some... You know, I did pin them and super glue them, but really, probably two part epoxy would have been better because they're they're in. They're not coming off because they're pinned, but they're not very stable either. And then you can plan, obviously, blending it in into the pavement things like that. So if you do trees, anything probably like you know with a bit of height in it, then ju just plan ahead. Um, but apart from that, yeah, please just please it's done. Again, thank you for sticking with this. I'm watching it all the way through and it's a bit long-winded but obviously when it comes to figures obviously the vehicle the actual base itself it's, it's a bit of a process so it's not something you can do in a you know a few videos or if you are you're cutting a lot out to, to edit it all in and break it down and then you know I don't know if you'd actually get anything out of the out of the series so um, yeah but overall Glad, glad it's finished, glad it's done, and you know, time to move on to the next project. And uh, we'll leave you with some beauty shots, I suppose, if you want to call it that. So, yeah, again, see you in the next one. And again, thank you for watching.